All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego as per usual. And today I'm joined by Wendy Weiss, who is in New York City. How are you doing, Wendy? I am fabulous and very happy to be here. <laughs> Yeah, and Wendy is the president of coldcallingresults.com and also known, I love this, it's, very, it's not often I get to interview a queen, but the queen of cold calling, author, speaker, sales trainer, and sales coach. And today what we're going to talk about, and I know you're going to love this subject, everybody out there particularly, as you are, um, you know, maybe this year has been a bit of a struggle for a lot of you in, in reaching quota and maybe... I'm struggling on building pipelines. So we're going to talk about how to build a pipeline of opportunities faster, more easily, and more profitably. Who doesn't want to hear about that? Okay, so Wendy, that's a bit of a tall order. So tell me, let's let's get right into it. How can people build their pipeline um, more, faster, better? Well, the first thing you actually need to do is talk to people. <laughs> and there's real research it was done at the university of chicago booth school of business just a couple of years ago where they tested written communication against spoken communication um, and written communication can be an email it could be a text uh, it could be a letter um, and spoken communication could be when you're in front of someone you're face to face with them you're on the phone or even a voicemail what they found is that when people hear you talk they are more likely to act on whatever it is you're talking about. So if you want to really accelerate your pipeline, you need to reach out by phone to the people you want to talk to and start having con actual conversations. Yeah, and, and it's funny because uh, it seems like over the last number of years, we've done, we've done everything we can to kind of avoid that. You know, people go, oh, you know, picking up the phone. You know, I've got all these great technologies can do it for me. I can now text. Oh, that's great. I can fire off text. And in fact, they've, they've got technologies now where you can basically spam text people or whatever. But people are, um, seem to have done almost everything they can to avoid picking up the phone and talking directly to people. Well, that, that is very true. And as a result, actually, it's easier to reach people because mm -hmm. your competition, is likely they're not calling them. So your call is going to stand out because uh, your competitors are probably not reaching out by phone. And because of the times we live in today where people um, are working remotely, if they're used to being in an office and now they're at home, they're feeling very isolated and uh, they are much more likely to pick up the phone and be willing to talk to you. Uh, Verizon actually reported that call volume these days, both on personal and business lines, call volume is higher than what they typically see on Mother's Day, which is their highest call volume day of the year. So people are talking on the phone. And if you reach out to them, they will talk to you. Yeah, and I think that's and I think that's a great point, and and I and I agree. I think people are more um, open to it right now, and obviously, um, a lot of people are feeling you know isolated and, and vulnerable and all that kind of thing, and therefore, even taking a phone call from a complete stranger, if it's on something that uh, may be of value to them, I think they're far more likely to engage in the conversation in the conversation than ever before so how do you how do you help people who say okay i get it i should pick up the phone more and i should make those calls but i, I don't really know how to okay that's a three-step process that we take our clients through and I'll, I'll preface this by saying that my first career i was a ballet dancer i danced in a yeah. ballet company and yeah. everything i know in life I learned in ballet class. So this is what I learned in ballet class. One, the first thing you have to do is warm up. Stretch out, loosen up, get set up so that you do not hurt yourself. <laughs> so as sales professionals, um, the first thing you have to do before you ever get on the phone is do your warm up. So that means what is the target? Um, out of everyone in the entire world maybe that you could reach out to, who are the best bets for you in your market? Those are the ones you want to spend your time on. So what's the target? And then 
the other half of this is what is the challenge that they have that you can help them with and how do they think about it? How do they talk about it? Not how do you talk about it among your peers, mm -hmm. but how do, how do they express the, their challenges? Um, and that's what you have to talk to them about when you get them on the telephone or if you leave a voicemail or even if you send them an email. So that's your warm up. The second thing that you need to do, because I learned this in ballet class, is you have to, uh, if you're a dancer, you rehearse. If you have a concert coming up, you don't just run out on stage and start dancing. You've been rehearsing. Well, you know what? You need to practice. If you're not used to this, if you've never done telephone prospecting or you're trying something new, you need to practice it. And uh, that's why sales trainers love role playing, because it's practice. Mm -hmm. Then the third stage here, I call this the performance model, warm up, rehearse. And if you've done those two things, then you perform. The problem is most people just jump right to the performance. And that doesn't usually work very well. So warm up, rehearse, perform. Yeah, I mean, this, this is fantastic advice. I mean, I love the warm up bit. Um, that's great because I do think that, uh, you know, we very rarely do people devote the time to warming up and the practicing too it's funny uh, i would say to people you probably spend more time practicing your hobbies than you do practicing the thing that puts bread on the table right yes that's true that's true and and it's so incredibly important to do that practice because i mean otherwise how are you going to um, obviously become good at things but i think uh, a lot of people just dive in and that's where you get the you know the feedback oh cold calling doesn't work you know or doesn't work doesn't work anymore because people have just dove straight in and haven't done the prep work i really like the idea of research though of understanding how your target talks about their issues that seems that seems like something that if you put in that work then you can have a conversation that has more that your has more credibility to it absolutely uh, most people that are doing this like to talk about all the things that they do Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is nobody cares what you do. They care how they're going to be better off when you finish doing whatever it is you do. And so um, one of the exercises, we, all, we actually take people uh, in our programs, we take them through this exercise. You can do it at home. Make a list of all the things you do. And then right next to each of those things that you've written down on your list, how are, how are your clients better off after you do that? Whatever it is. Um, and I'll, I can give you a, a concrete example. Yeah. Client that we were working with. Um, she worked with nonprofit agencies and she helped them put on fundraising events. And so uh, I asked her the question, you know, why, why should your clients, why should people be interested in talking to you? How are they better off? Uh, how do you help them? And she said, oh, well, we have a very special proprietary process. And I said, okay, so what? Tell me more. And she said, well, we meet with our, our clients. And I said, okay, so what? And she said, well, we ask them a lot of questions. <laughs> and I said, okay, so what? She said, well, then we analyze the answers. I said, okay, so what? And she said, well, then we make recommendations. And I said, okay, so what? I said to her, how are your clients better off? You take them through this proprietary process you meet with them, you ask some questions, you analyze the answers, you make recommendations, how are they better off? She said, oh, their fundraising events make money. I said, bingo, that's yeah. what you need to talk about. <laughs> and once she started talking about helping nonprofit agencies uh, increase their fundraising through their events, people stopped hanging up on her. She was yeah. actually able to engage. Uh, it's funny you say, say that because it's so it's so it, it's so often that people do call you and they get so caught up in their own process or what they want to say or they start off or you pick up a voicemail message and it's you know hey hello I'm John Golden from blah 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 and this is what we do and and most people have hit delete by the time you got to um, the end of end of that piece so um, often people don't know how to start off with something that's that's gripping and interesting to people like what you just said there is you know we can help you fundraise more money absolutely it's less is more 
The idea is uh, to get their attention and get their engagement. And I actually, John, I think of this like dating. Mm -hmm. If you are prospecting and you're looking to schedule appointments, um, that's just like dating. If you want to go on a date with someone, you have to ask them out. Mm -hmm. And th if they say yes, then you get to go on the yeah. date. Well, what, what we're doing when you prospect is you're essentially asking for the date. You're ask, you say enough to get their attention and you ask for the appointment. And an mm -hmm. appointment, I'll give you a definition of the word appointment, is that the prospect agrees to have an in-depth conversation. Right. So maybe that happens on the phone. Uh, maybe that happens over Zoom. Maybe one day again, you will get in your car and go see them. But they're agreeing mm -hmm. to talk to you. And once they agree to talk to you, you can talk to them. So first you ask for the date, then you go on the date. You ask for the appointment, then you have the appointment. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, a, it's, a good, it's, a, it's a very good analogy because if you think about it, if you're asking somebody out on a date and you, start, you started off by just introducing yourself and then telling everything about yourself and what you do, the other person would be looking at you going, and you're telling me this why? <laughs> <laughs> and not to mention it does make you look a bit self-consumed and i think that's the problem that uh, that often it uh, you know, when you do get some when somebody does uh, get you on the phone or does leave a message you're like yeah great sounds like you work for a wonderful company i don't know what any of this has got to do with me and if they don't understand that they're not returning your phone call mm -hmm. exactly. or replying to your email Exactly, exactly. And then, um, so, and, and I love the piece that you talked about earlier, it, it's very important to be focused and targeted, right, rather than to be kind of all over the place and to really understand who your, who your target prospect is. And otherwise, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time and activity and very little of it's going to turn into results. Absolutely. We teach our clients to micro target. And they might have many different micro targets. But when you micro target, when you narrow your focus, that enables you to create messaging that's really going to resonate. Mm. And that's, that's what we're looking for that, you know, people talk about cold calling as learning to deal with rejection or learning how to handle the no's or what mm. to say when someone says no. No, that's not what it's about. It's about knowing what to say so that they say yes to you. Right. So when you get the messaging right, actually, and we see it over and over with our clients, say what you have to say, the prospect goes, okay, and they open up their calendars. That's what's <laughs> supposed to happen. Yeah, but it's funny, um, the, the, you just touched on something interesting there, though, was the fact that, I mean, there is this negativity around prospecting, right? You just said there, you know, like, prospecting is dealing with rejection, prospecting is overcoming the no's. Um, we've kind of built it up as this awful thing. And no wonder a lot of salespeople like hate the idea of prospecting because we've made it into this negative thing. Yeah, you know, people say so many dumb things about this topic. And the bottom line is what you're trying to do here. I think of it as introductory calling. You're mm -hmm. calling to introduce yourself. That's it. Um, you're not, the idea on the phone is uh, you're not asking someone to make a buying decision in like a minute or a hiring decision in a minute. You're calling to introduce yourself. So if you, if you think about it in this manner, um, a lot of the anxiety goes away because all you're looking to do is introduce yourself and get agreement to have an in-depth conversation. And yeah, down the line, you want to turn this prospect into a client, but there are, there are steps you have to go through first. You uh, don't get married <laughs> until <laughs> you've gone on some dates. So first you got to ask for the date. Um, yeah. yeah, there's very few, um, very few dates or a, a, a one date close, right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and I think that the, the mindset um, that, you know, everybody hates it, but you have to do it. I don't think that's a mindset that helps. Um, I do not believe that anyone needs to love prospecting. That, that's mm -hmm. kind of silly. But mm -hmm. if you think of it as a business process, it's introductory calling. It is a business process. Um, 
and you're going to execute the business process or if you're managing a team they're going to execute this business process and if somebody says no or you get bad reactions that is data that mm -hmm. is data that tells you that something isn't working and you need to fix it yeah, no, absolutely. Or it's just the wrong, or you, it was just the wrong person at the wrong time and just, you know, move on. But yeah, but I do think often uh, we take these small kind of negative data points to reinforce our own bias against it in the first place. Absolutely. And, um, you, you know, when I started my business many years ago, before I started my business, I needed a day job. I was off from the ballet company and I needed a day job. <laughs> And I got a job with a telemarketing agency that did business development. And they handed me a script and a list and said, call these people, this is what you say. And um, at the time I was about 20, didn't know anything about business. And um, I thought because I was an artist, in my world, artists were very important people. I mm -hmm. thought everybody would wanna talk to me. It never occurred to me that they wouldn't want to talk to me. <laughs> and so they gave me, I became their top caller in like a matter of weeks because I would just get people on the phone and insist they meet with the client. I didn't know what I was doing, but I thought they wanted to talk to me. So I was fearless. And that was just my belief system. It didn't really have anything to do with reality. Yeah. That, oh, everybody wants to talk to me because I'm an artist. <laughs> But that was just how I thought about it. It enabled me to be really good. And I love that thought. I mean, if, if it's a great takeaway for anybody watching or listening is to maybe maybe just adopt that mindset for a little bit and see how it changes. The point is, uh, instead of calling somebody, expecting them to not want to talk to you or expecting a bad results, um, call people th with the expectation that absolutely they'll want to talk to you. Yeah. And, and let me add one more thing to that for any of you that might be struggling, because I was lucky when I got that day job, they taught me this skill. They, they gave me scripts that work. They taught me how to use them. They taught me why those scripts work. They taught me what to say if I heard certain questions or objections. They taught me the skill. Learning the skill enabled me to build a business. And the really good news for any of you that are struggling or if you have a team of people and they're not producing for you, this is a skill. It can be learned and it can be improved on. Yeah, and I think that's the important thing is we, again, and to, to round this out, what you talked about at the very beginning in your three-step process is, you know, warming up, you know, practicing and, and then performing is, is there are skills you can learn if you're prepared to invest the time in yourself. And let's face it, what better time is there right now? Um, a lot of people have, uh, <clears throat> you know, you'll not have all those distractions of being in the office or being on the road. So you've got plenty of time to invest in yourself. And if you don't invest in yourself, who's going to? Absolutely. Yeah. This, this has been fantastic, Wendy. Thank you so much for joining us today. All of Wendy's information will be in her contributor bio below this video. But before you go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what your company does. Absolutely. Um, we're sales training consultancy and uh, we help our clients we work with sales teams or individual uh, business owners entrepreneurs and help them build their pipelines faster more easily more profitably because we help them micro target we help them warm up rehearse perform micro target create the messaging that's going to resonate practice and then uh, execute and uh, we actually uh, we have two gifts for our listeners, actually, if you are someone that is, uh, you are making calls, uh, and I believe you're going to post this all on, on the yep. page for folks. Absolutely. The, if you are making calls, the cold calling survival guide will give you a step by step on how to make prospecting calls. And if you manage a sales team, we have a practical guide to getting sales teams to prospect. And that will show you what you need to have in place to make salespeople successful. Yeah, that's fantastic. Listen, we really appreciate those. And, and I think they'll be very valuable assets to people who listen to this. Uh, again, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Thank you very much, Wendy. And I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.